because the soul of this nation is strong, because the backbone of this nation is strong, because the people of this nation are strong, the State of the Union is strong. Some of my Republican friends want to take the economy hostage. I get it, unless I agree to their economic plans. All of you at home should know what those plans are. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. Let me give you anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. And I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. You know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks, the idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. And when police officers or police departments violate the public trust, they must be held accountable. With the support, with the support of the families of victims, civil rights groups, and law enforcement. I signed an executive order for all federal officers banning chokeholds, restricting no-knock warrants, and other key elements of the George Floyd Act. Let's commit ourselves to make the words of Tyler's mom true. Something good must come from this. Something good. <laughs> and all of us, All of us. <laughs> Folks, it's difficult, but it's simple. All of us in, the cha in this chamber, we need to rise to this moment. We can't turn away. Let's do what we know in our hearts that we need to do. Let's come together to finish the job on police reform. Do something. And two weeks ago, during the Lunar New Year celebrations, you heard the studio door close, and you saw a man standing there pointing a semi-automatic pistol at him. He thought he was going to die, but he thought about the people inside. And in that instant, he found the courage to act and wrestle the semi-automatic pistol away from the gunman who had already killed 11 people in another dance studio. 11. He saved lives. It's time we do the same. Banned assault weapons now. Ban them now. Once and for all. Putin's invasion has been a test for the ages. A test for America. A test for the world. Would we stand for the most basic of principles? We stand for sovereignty. We stand for the right of people to live free of tyranny. We stand for the defense of democracy. For such defense matters to us because it keeps peace and prevents open season on would-be aggressors and threatens our prosperity. One year later, we know the answer. Yes, we would, and we did. We did. I'm committed to work with China where we can advance American interests and benefit the world. But make no mistake about it. As we made clear last week, if China threatens our sovereignty, we will act to protect our country, and we did. Look, let's be clear. Winning the competition should unite all of us. We face serious challenges across the world. But in the past two years, democracies have become stronger, not weaker. Autocracy has grown weaker, not stronger. Name me a world leader who changed places with Xi Jinping. Name me one.
Name me one. America's rallying the world to meet those challenges from climate to global health to food insecurity to terrorism to territorial aggression. Allies are stepping up, spending more, and doing more. Look, the bridges we're forming between partners in the Pacific and those in the Atlantic and those who bet against America are learning how wrong they are. It's never, ever been a good bet to bet against America. Never. <laughs>